and I'm going to turn my camera off. OK, so welcome to Careers in Psychology. As I said, my name is Patsy. I'm a careers advisor at the University of Limerick. I've been working with psychology students in UL since the first psychology degree started, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. Um, so I have a lot of experience working with psychology students at undergraduate and postgraduate level. I also have a degree in psychology from University College Cork and I'm a qualified guidance counsellor. So that's that's why I'm a careers advisor in higher education. Um, so here we go. First of all, before I get into the nitty gritty of you know what you can do with your psychology qualification, what can we do in the career service to help you? So we have a huge amount of services to help you every step of the way when you're planning your career. So if you'd like to make an appointment to meet a careers advisor at any stage, you can just make an appointment through Careers Connect and you can just click on Careers Consultation to either speak to myself or one of my colleagues. Because of COVID-19, probably now more so than ever, we have lots of line on la on online live webinars every single week. So very practical things like creating a CV, creating a LinkedIn profile, preparing for psychometric tests, help with preparing for assessment centres. For any of you, if you are, if you have any interviews coming up in the next few months and you want to do a practice interview, we can help you to prepare for an interview. But I think we've got a competency based interview um, session this Friday as well at 11 o'clock. If you're looking for jobs in the public sector as a psychologist, a lot of the interviews will be competency based interviews. So it's really useful to know what they are and how to prepare for them. We also have practical sessions on searching for jobs, researching postgraduate options. I know quite a lot of psychology students, they have to write fairly detailed personal statements when they're applying for a postgraduate course. So if anybody needs a hand with writing their personal statement, we can send you videos that we've recorded. We can also give you some feedback on your personal statements as well. And we have sessions on identifying your skills and values, and we have lots of employers coming in every week as well to talk about the opportunities that they have. OK, but let's get back to psychology. So what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm just going to ask you what your career plans are. You can put your answers into the chat box. Then I'm going to have a look at where previous psychology students are working or studying. I'm going to ask you what skills do you think you have from studying psychology? We'll have a look at some careers as a professional psychologist. A uh, professional psychologist. I'm going to look at, in a little bit of detail. <clears throat> excuse me, at clinical psychology and how to get jobs as an assistant psychologist. I know there are lots of areas like educational psychology, counselling psychology, but really the requirements are pretty similar for all of them. Obviously, there will be some differences, but I think once you kind of can get get your head around the requirements for one. It will give you, you know, a good grounding in what to do for the other areas. But because we only have 40 minutes today, I can't go into a huge amount of detail. We're going to look at how LinkedIn can help you in the job search and to find out, you know, the different career paths you might want to take. We'll look at related jobs to psychology. Obviously, not everybody studying psychology wants to be or will end up working as a professional psychologist. So we'll look at some other career paths as well. I'll give you some brief information on graduate programmes for psychology and social science students. We'll have a look at some other graduate programmes where a degree in any discipline is, you know, is required. It doesn't have to be in business or psychology. Some employers are happy to take graduates from any discipline. And then we'll have a look at further study and some useful links that you might want to use. OK, so what I want you to do just briefly in the chat box, Tell me, what are your plans for next year? If you don't have any, that's fine. Hopefully by the end of this session, you might have some. But if you have any plans for next year or you're kind of mulling something over, just put them into the chat box. Clementine, fine work and assistant psychologist. Melanie, PhD or professional research. Thank you. AP role again. So yeah, the assistant psychologist roles are always really, really popular be working, find relevant experience to get into a master's. Thank you, Cassidy. Okay. 
Okay, I might come back to some of those again at the end, doing my MA in psychology, but not sure where to go from here. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Sarah. Looking for internships to do with research. <clears throat> Work with the HSE before a PhD. Okay, thank you, Deirdre. Okay, well, hopefully today's session you'll find it useful, especially if you're thinking about assistant psychologist roles. <clears throat> but before we do that, we do research every year. It's called the Graduate Outcome Survey. And what we do is we do a survey nine months after you know, students have graduated from UL to find out what they're currently working at, what if they're studying. Now, again, because it's only nine months, it doesn't give a very long term picture of what people are doing. So we also use LinkedIn as well. As I said a couple of minutes ago, LinkedIn can be so useful to find out what previous graduates are doing and maybe to help you figure out your own career path. But anyway, this is what kind of psychology students from the past have gone directly into after finishing their degree in UL. So you can see that a lot of psychology graduates, some of them go into related career areas. So Focus Island, for example, have a graduate program where you could be working with homeless families and children. Other people have gone into banks like Northern Trust. They've gone into professional consultancy firms like Deloitte, Accenture. Other people, again, community-based organisations, the Simon community. Rehab care are always looking for staff. So keep an eye on rehab care if you're interested in getting experience with adults, with learning disabilities, things like that. You can see that somebody went to the UK to work as a speech and language therapy assistant. Speech and language therapy is so popular. There aren't a huge amount of jobs in that area in Ireland. You'll see the odd one here and there. I saw one on the HSE a couple of weeks ago. There are tons of jobs in the UK. So if you're thinking about speech and language therapy, but you want to get some experience first, that's definitely one to look at. Another really popular option for graduates from any discipline is to go to the Middle East to be a teacher with SABIS. What's interesting about that is you don't have to be a qualified teacher to go to SABIS. So if you want to teach for a year, you want to make some money, you want to leave Ireland, you want to get some experience, SABIS are always recruiting. One of our previous graduates from psychology went on to the graduate management program with Little. So again, some of the massive employers in Ireland, the big multinationals, they'll accept graduates from any discipline. So it's more about who you are rather than the subjects that you've studied. Other people decided to go traveling. Maybe next year, some of you might decide to do that as well. Recruitment is popular for psychology graduates, especially if you're studying things like work and organizational psychology. Then you've got other people working immigration, HR administration. The HSE GradLink program has just closed. That closed in September. They open that every year, I think, at the beginning of September, maybe August. But that's a really interesting program if you'd like to get some work experience in the HSE. It's not really for budding psychologists, but it gives you a good introduction to kind of different areas in the HSE. So keep an eye on that next year. Other people have gone on to work as research assistants and learning support assistants in schools in the UK. OK, so they're people who've gone directly into jobs. What kind of postgrad study do they go on to do? So a lot of psychology students do want to train in a professional area or want to increase their knowledge. So you can see here that previous psychology students have gone on to things like work and organisational psychology. That's a really popular course here in UL. So you see quite a few psychology graduates doing that with a view to working in HR, in learning and development, um, the MSc in psychological science for people who are possibly thinking about clinical psychology. Another route that seems to be becoming more popular if you don't want to take the long route down the kind of the professional doctorate routes are the two year master's degrees in speech and language therapy and occupational therapy in UL. You can see other courses there like applied behaviour analysis. Some people have gone straight into PhDs in psychology, in neuroscience, health psychology, forensic psychology, applied psychology, neuropsychology. If you're studying psychology and sociology, previous graduates have gone in to do the masters in sociology. And I saw one student recently, I think it was in Denmark or the Netherlands. Anyway, he went on to do the MSc in clinical and psychosocial epidemiology, which sounds really interesting. If anybody is here from the BA Arts, the joint honours, so 
that's a little bit different. You may be studying psychology, you won't have PSI accreditation, so you will have to go on and do a conversion course. But some of the jobs that people from the BA Joint on, Honours have gone into, the Peter McBerry Trust, again, they have a fantastic graduate programme and graduate opportunities if you're looking to get some more experience in the areas of youth homelessness, addiction, alcohol, um, anything like that. You'd be working with very vulnerable clients, but they're a great organisation. They have a fantastic training programme, so definitely keep an eye out for them. Other people have gone into lots of different areas. Again, as I said, Lots of employers will take somebody from any degree. So some people have gone into things like IBEC Global Graduates Program. It's a two year program. Some, you know, sometimes you can kind of spend time abroad helping Irish businesses develop their brand. Teaching in the Middle East, the Students' Union, banking. Again, it very much depends on the other subjects that you're studying with your BA joint honours, but lots of opportunities. Again, I think most arts students tend to go on and do further study. So as you can see there, BA art students have gone into things like the MA in psychology, which is the one year psychology conversion programme in UL, which will give you PSI accreditation. Lots of others have gone on to do teacher training, languages, maths, economics, project management, teaching English to speakers of other languages, criminal justice, technical communication and e-learning. So there are lots and lots of options for you after your undergraduate degree and they don't necessarily have to be a direct follow on. And then briefly, I had a quick look yesterday. So I know that somebody is here from the MA in psychology. Um, so quite a few of them have gone on to work as assistant psychologists. I was having a look at LinkedIn the other day and I could see that some of them are working with the rehab group, the Brothers of Charity, Jigsaw, Nua Healthcare. That's only a tiny selection. And then we've got graduates from the Masters in Work and Organisational Psychology who've gone on to work in lots of different areas in recruitment and HR with you know, professional services companies in Rhode Island, the HSE. So again, a wide variety of careers and jobs out there. OK, so let's kind of get into the whole kind of psychology area. According to the British psychological. I'll come back to you on that actually. I didn't get a chance to do a lot of research, but we can have a chat about that. According to the British Psychological Society, only about 20% of psychology students go on to become professional psychologists. So it's not a big amount really. I think when a lot of students come into first year of their degree, whether it's an arts degree, a psychology degree, it's all clinical psychology, counselling psychology. I think once you've done your research and you found out how long the route is and how competitive the route is, a lot of people decide that, you know, by the time they get to the final year, look, maybe it's, it's just too long. It's going to take me too long. It's too competitive. So I think the numbers tend to drop. So I think it's pretty much the same here in Ireland, that only a small number of psychology graduates go on to train to be professional psychologists. But I always say as well, for example, the clinical doctorate here in UL, there might be 10 or 12 places, but somebody has to get a place on that programme. So why shouldn't you get that place? It will take time. It will be competitive. But again, if it's what you really want to do, there's no reason why you wouldn't do it. But if you're deciding that the whole professional psychology route is not the route, of you, the route for you, you need to be really clear about what skills you have, what you've gained from your psychology degree. A lot of employers out there, they don't really understand what a psychology degree is. So they see it as just a generic degree that, and that will enable you to apply for lots of different jobs. So you need to be really, really clear about the skills that you have from studying psychology. So if I was to ask you quickly and to put into the chat box again, what skills do you think you have from your degree or your postgraduate degree? What skills would you be able to tell me now that you have? Research, yep. Data analysis, statistics, absolutely. Melanie, yeah, research design, problem solving, yeah. So I think psychology is a fantastic degree because somebody said to me once, and I'm not sure if you would agree with me here, 
But if you've been studying psychology, you may have done more maths than somebody from a business studies degree through studying SPSS, statistics, data analysis. So I'm assuming that you'll have some really good numerical skills. So I think a lot of psychology students sometimes they think, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do now because you know, I'm not going to go down the professional psychology route. So what can I do? If you think about the skills that you have, you have skills that employers would kill for. So you've got the obvious skills like communication skills, presentations, report writing, statistical analysis, data analysis, again, problem solving, critical thinking, research and analysis, research ethics, cultural awareness, interpersonal awareness. These are all skills that all employers really look for when they're recruiting graduates. But again, it really is up to you to have a look, have a think and think, oh my God, yeah, I do have these skills. So you need to be able to identify the skills that you have and you need to be able to articulate them, whether it's in a CV or an application form or an interview. Because again, remember, some of the employers out there who aren't really clear, you know, what you're studying in psychology, they think it's just about understanding other people, but it's a fantastic degree to develop all of these skills and you need to be explicit about the skills that you have. If you want to do a free online assessment about your competencies, there's a pretty good website here. I had a look at it last week. It's called 123test.com forward slash competency test, and it will just help you to kind of figure out what skills you have and you know the language around skills as well. Okay, so let's get on to careers as a professional psychologist. So for those of you that are studying degrees that are accredited by the Psychological Society of Ireland, are you all a student member of the PSI? Can you just put that into the chat box for me? Yes, brilliant. Not yet, Melanie, Michaela, yes. Margarita, yes. Okay. No, Sarah, Sarah, Erica, yes. I would definitely, if you're doing an accredited degree by the PSI, the first thing I would do is join as a student member. They're absolutely fantastic. What's really good, not that there's many good things about COVID-19, the PSI have so many activities going on. A couple of years ago, everything was Dublin, Dublin centric. So they had loads of careers events going on. They were all in Dublin. They're running everything online now. I saw recently that they had webinars for people who were interested in becoming assistant psychologists. They had a panel of assistant psychologists. They had another webinar on clinical psychology. I think recently they were, they were doing something about play therapy. You have free access to all of this if you're a student member. It's about 25 euro per annum. You'll also get a copy of the Irish Psychologist magazine. So if you really want to keep your finger on the pulse about what's happening in Ireland, in the world of psychology, um, that's okay, Cassidy, um, definitely become a member of the Psychological Society. They have a fantastic student affairs group as well. I follow them on Facebook so I can see all the events that they're running. So that's one thing that I would definitely encourage you to do would be to become a student member of the PSI. Okay, so clinical psychology is the one that seems to be the most popular with psychology students. And what's interesting is that they're having an open evening in about three weeks time. Um, Tuesday, the 7th of December, it's a Microsoft Teams meeting from 5.30 to 7 p.m. I was at that meeting last year. I think there were about 80, again, it was online, there were about 80 attendees. It was absolutely fantastic. The information that I learned from that about the requirements, the relevant work experience, what the course involves. So if you are interested in clinical psychology, I would definitely attend that Teams meeting in a couple of weeks time. So it's three years long, very small amount of places. I've done some work with the the doctoral students over the last couple of years when they're coming to the end of their doctorate to help them to prepare for interviews for the HSE for their basic grade psychology psychologist positions and it's so interesting because I'm always interested to find out you know what did you study before this how many times did you have to apply and you probably won't be surprised to hear that for some of them you know I think for most people actually and again, it depends on your background, your experience. Some people will apply 
once, twice, three times before they're actually successful. So don't, if you are really interested in this doctorate, if you feel you have the relevant qualifications, enough experience, definitely apply for it, but it's very, very competitive. If you don't get it the first time around, continue to work and gain more experience and apply again the following year. Okay, so again, you need to have a recognised undergraduate and or postgraduate. And I think I was looking at the link yesterday, at least one year's practical and or research experience. So that's at least one year, not maximum of one year, but at least one year. Okay, so if you want to find out more about that, go to the open evening on Tuesday, the 7th of December. Because there's such a limited <clears throat> number of doctoral programmes in Ireland, some of you may think about going further afield to do your doctoral training. So if you're thinking about becoming a clinical psychologist, the UK have 30 courses all around the UK. Again, they've got a much larger population, so it's really, really competitive. They only have one portal, though, that you apply through. It's the University of Leeds. That's the portal there. You put your application in there. You pick the universities that you want to do your training in. <clears throat> I think you can choose up to four. But that website is absolutely fantastic anyway, because it will tell you, it gives loads of advice on where to get more experience. Um, it has, you can see down at the bottom there, they have a generic job description for a trainee clinical psychologist. So that'll give you an idea of kind of skills, qualities, you know, educational requirements needed. Um, the closing date is today, actually. If you're still studying your undergraduate degree, um, you know, you have to have your degree finished before you can apply. But the closing date, I think, is today. Or maybe that's the opening date. I don't know. Have a look anyway. But I think the most important thing to see here is that 22% of applicants succeeded in gaining a place on the NHS clinical psychology training last year. So it's a very small number again. So the, the advantage is though in the UK you've got more places. You know, you've got more places to apply to, but again, it's very, very competitive. What's really interesting, the British Psychological Society, they have a fantastic website on careers in psychology. Mm, not sure, Michaela, about the fee. You'd have to look at the fees for that. There's a brilliant, oh, today, thanks, Elaine. Um, the Alternative Handbook is absolutely fantastic. It's produced by the British Psychological Society. It's absolutely free to download from the BPS website. And what they do every year is they ask, students who are currently training to be clinical psychologists, what it's like to be a trainee on all 30 programmes in the UK. So again, even though it's in the UK, you get some really good information um, on you know, what the entry requirements are, what kind of work experience they have to have. So it's a really good document because I think a lot of the tips and advice and the information that you would read in that handbook it will apply to Ireland as well. So again, and I think this is pretty similar here. So the summary of what um, of what comes across in that alternative handbook is that a large number of respondents have replied at least once before being accepted. So again, for the clinical doctorates, whether it's a clinical psychology doctorate, educational, you know, it's pretty common to apply more than once. The average age was 24 to 39. So that's a pretty big age gap. So you can see from that that a lot of people are pro have probably been working and studying for a good few years before they actually applied and were accepted onto the doctorate. For additional qualifications, most had master's degrees. I would think, if not all, I think in Ireland, you have to have a master's degree. It's going to be pretty rare that you would get into, <clears throat> excuse me, you would have, it, would, it would be pretty rare to get into a, a clinical doctorate with only a, you know, an undergraduate degree. And again, I think if you're interested in that area, go to the online session in a couple of weeks. The relevant work experience prior to starting the doctorate was two years plus. All of them had been employed as assistant psychologists, research assistants or healthcare assistants prior to applying for the clinical doctorate. The booklet also goes into detail on the interview process, what's covered in each course. <clears throat> the next part here, I've put it into bold because this came up last year 
at the information evening for the clinical doctor in UL. In the UK, many courses require access to a car, so they expect you to have a full driving licence because the placements could be anywhere. I think that's pretty similar here as well, to be honest. So I don't think it's going to be in the application form that you have to have a driving licence, but I think you need to be aware that without a car, if you're going to find it difficult to get to a placement, it's going to cause problems for you. So it's something to think about. I mean, you may not be applying, applying for the clinical doctorate for a couple of years yet. If you're not currently driving, now is the time to start getting some driving lessons. Many in the UK, you may have to do selection tests prior to the interview. Um, not sure if that's the case here, can't remember. But again, you can find out in the next couple of weeks. So you can see there are a lot of kind of, it's not just enough to have your degree. You need to have relevant work experience. You need to have a master's degree. You may need to have some more research experience. Um, but apart the gold standard for getting a place on a clinical doctorate is to get a job as a clinical or as, a, as an assistant psychologist. I was looking at the PSI's website. Now this is from 2014, okay? So it's quite a few years ago, but I think it's still pretty much the same. 71% of entrants to the clinical doctorate psychology programs had previously worked as an assistant psychologist. And they felt that this position helped them develop the required competencies for entry to professional training programs. I think that still stands. I could be wrong, but I really think that if you're looking at applying for a clinical doctorate anyway, trying to get a position as an assistant psychologist is what you should be aiming for. How to get a job as an assistant psychologist though, tricky. I had a look on LinkedIn yesterday. I didn't see anything at the moment, but you do see jobs coming up for assistant psychologists every now and then. So the last job I saw, Enable Island were looking for, I know gold dust, you're absolutely right, Michaela. Um, Enable Island advertised for an assistant psychologist last month, October the 21st, and I saw that on indeed.ie. It could have been on LinkedIn as well, but if you just have a look at the criteria to get a position as an assistant psychology. So you've got your essential criteria and then you've got your desirable criteria, which is like the icing on the cake, really. So again, you need to have a PSI recognised degree. Then you have to have your relevant experience. And this is for Enable Ireland. So if you're looking, say, the Irish Prison Service or Jigsaw or Acquired Brain Injury Ireland, they'll all have different requirements. So this is just to give you an idea of one example. So relevant qualifications, relevant experience, knowledge of the disability sector, frameworks of psychology. So they're all the essential criteria the desirable criteria. So these are the things that will really kind of put you to the front of the queue. Relevant postgraduate training specific to child disability services and awareness and understanding of the features of autism spectrum disorder. So you can see that even to get a job as an assistant psychologist, you have to have a lot of experience before that. But again, do you know, once you graduate, you've done your masters, you're kind of getting experience in different areas, it will all count to getting a job as an assistant psychologist. Sometimes you might work as an assistant psychologist for a couple of years before you feel ready to apply for the doctorate. Okay, so how can LinkedIn help you? Okay, before I tell you how LinkedIn can be really useful to you, can I just ask all of you, do you have a LinkedIn profile? So you can just use the chat box for this as well. Yes, yes, yes. Great, fantastic, okay. Okay, LinkedIn is a fantastic tool and it's not just for looking for jobs. It's not just to kind of put up an online version of your CV. LinkedIn is amazing. I did some really good research last year and the last couple of weeks on looking at where previous graduates have gone. So how can LinkedIn help you if you're looking for a job as an assistant psychologist or you want to find out career paths, paths of other UL alumni who are now working as assistant psychologists or working as clinical psychologists. So once you're on your LinkedIn page, go into the search box and go to the University of Limerick um, LinkedIn page. You can see that UL has over 73,000 UL alumni who have LinkedIn 
profiles. That's a huge amount of you all graduates who are out there working and they all have public LinkedIn profiles as well. If you go into that page and then you click on the alumni button, you will see a search box. So what you can do with that search box is you can type in a title, a keyword or a company. I went in there yesterday and I typed in assistant psychologist and it came up with 338 alumni. Now, I can't scroll down there, but you'll see it when you go into it. You can see where they live. Are they living in Ireland? Are they in the UK? Are they in the US? Are they in Europe? Where are they? And then you can see where they're working as well. And then I also typed in clinical psychologist. So from that, I can see how many UL alumni are working as clinical psychologists, where they're working. So you can see the HSE is really popular. UL is also popular. I can also see where they live. Um, but what's really, what's even better than that is once, once you kind of type these words in, what will come up on the page below is you can see all these individual profiles of UL graduates. And once you have a look at their profile, you can see exactly where they're working. You can have a look at their career path. So you might see that somebody graduated from a psychology degree in UL 10 years ago. You know, what did they do? What was their career path like? Where did they work as, you know, as an assistant psychologist? What did they do before becoming an assistant psychologist? How many years did it take them to become a clinical psychologist or an educational psychologist? It's just fascinating to look at people's stories. So when I was looking at assistant psychologists, because I know that's kind of the one of the first steps that you, you know, one of the first rungs of the ladder that you kind of have to navigate. What I discovered from looking at kind of the assistant psychologist profiles on LinkedIn was that most of them have master's degrees. I also noticed that a lot of them, before they got their assistant psychologist positions, they had jobs as healthcare assistants, rehabilitation assistants, special needs, mental health, disability support, acquired brain injury support workers, social care workers. So you can see that a lot of them had to work in areas that wouldn't have the word psychologist as part of the job title, but those roles help them to get a job as an assistant psychologist. Some of them had two or three positions as assistant psychologists, or they're still working as an assistant psychologist. And then you can see that some of them have gone on to study, you know, professional, you know, doctorates in clinical or educational psychology. So where are they working? So I could see that they're working the HSE, the UL counselling service, mental health services, the prison service, the Brothers of Charity, Enable Ireland, the National Learning Network. So these are all areas that you could start having a look to see where you can find work as well, because all of these are a lot of them anyway, especially organisations like the National Learning Network, Enable Ireland, Brothers of Charity, Acquired Brain Injury Ireland, a lot of those organisations they will recruit for social care workers or mental health workers as well. So these are all great places to get some work experience, but they also recruit psychologists as well. So it's a great place. These are great places to get some experience. You could be working alongside assistant psychologists or clinical psychologists so you can get real insight into what these professionals do. So this is the next part. So if you want to get a job as an assistant psychologist, and I think as you said there, Michaela, assistant psychologist positions are like gold dust. So how do you get your assistant psychologist position? You need to build up your work experience. There are lots of jobs out there that won't even say the word psychologist in the job description. It will say things like project workers with the Peter McBerry Trust, social care workers, education project workers. I mean, if you look at all these organisations here, you've got groups that support travellers, adults with disabilities, homeless families and children, prisoners, probation work, the rehab group, adults with disabilities. These are all the types of work experience that you need to think about getting if you want to build up your experience. Because when we're looking at that job description, as we were looking at a couple of minutes ago for the assistant psychologist, you're not going to get that role unless you've built up your work experience. But you can build up your work experience if you keep a lookout on websites like activelink.ie. It's an absolutely brilliant website. Even indeed.ie, and you put in the search box or the search box psychology, social care, mental health, addiction, whatever. So there are lots of positions 
advertised out there in areas where we work with children, young people, addiction, homeless support, adults with intellectual disabilities. You just won't see the word psychologist, but these are the jobs that you, you, know, you may want to consider if you're looking to gain experience before going on to become a professional psychologist. OK, so very briefly, educational psychology, it's pretty much the same. So I had a look at Mary I in particular. Again, it's three years full time. But what they're looking for is two years relevant full time experience before you can apply for the doctoral programme. So again, you can see a lot of experience is required and a high level of qualifications. So where to get some experience if you specifically want to work with children? So again, you might even decide did the government say a few weeks ago that they were hiring more special needs assistants? You might decide to take a year out after you've graduated if you're thinking about um, educational psychology and working as a special needs assistant. You might decide to do a PME in primary teaching or secondary teaching if you have the subjects for secondary. If you're in your final year in UL and you're going on to do a postgrad next year, you know, even doing voluntary work with children, you know, after school clubs, homework clubs. Voluntary organisations are always looking for people, the ISPCC, Bernardo's, Women's Aid, Adapt House in Limerick, it's a support refuge for women and children fleeing domestic violence. So there are lots of opportunities, even to get some voluntary experience before you can start applying for the paid jobs. So do your research, there are lots of opportunities out there. OK, so moving on, the Peter McBerry Trust, if you've heard of them. Um, I don't think their graduate programme is open yet. They're all over the country now. They are, I think, are they the state's biggest housing charity. They provide a fantastic training programme for social sciences, psychology graduates. If you're interested in mental health, addiction, young people, families, the homeless community. So there's the website for the Peter McVeary Trust. Check it out if you're looking to get some experience. You also have Focus Island, their graduate programme. I don't think that's open yet either. Could be after Christmas when they start recruiting for that. Again, they're very much working with families and children at risk or affected by homelessness. It's such a massive, you know, if you listen to the news at all, it's just unbelievable. You know, it's, a, it's an epidemic of homelessness in this country, actually. So there are a lot of very, very vulnerable families, children out there, young people, and there's a big demand for people to work in this area. OK, okay if you've been completely turned off and you've decided that the, the clinical, the doctoral route is not for you because it's going to take 10 years, maybe, you could look at other options, allied options like the MSc in Speech and Language Therapy. So in UL, you can do a two year professional master's degree in Speech and Language Therapy. At the end of the two years, you're a fully qualified Speech and Language Therapist. So it's two years. You can come from any degree background. It doesn't matter what you're studying. You don't have to have finished your degree. You can apply in the final semester of your degree. The Irish Association of Speech and Language Therapists has a really good website. The only thing about this is, and it's the same for occupational therapy, to get into this programme, you have to do the page pass exam. It's not easy. It's really, really competitive. You can do preparation courses. If anybody is thinking about applying for speech and language therapy or occupational therapy, if you want to contact me, I can send you some information. But that website there, the HPASH Ireland, ASA.org, is where you'll get a really detailed handbook. The closing date for the HPASH, it's different for the, for the course, so you need to check the course. The closing date to apply for the HPASH, though, is the 21st of January. The tests will run from the 18th to the 21st of February. I think you can pick the time. There are four sections that you'll have to complete. So you'll have a logical reasoning, interpersonal understanding, non-verbal reasoning, and only if you're applying to UL, you'll have to do a written English section as well. They introduced that because I think the, the number of people applying was so big, so large, that they had to kind of just decide, you know, to kind of run this assessment to get rid, you know, because it's so competitive. So this is the only way of getting into the MSc in speech and language therapy now. It's exactly the same for occupational therapy. Occupational therapy is such an interesting profession. If it's not something you've considered before, have a look at the website. Um, I think they actually have a really good video on the website as well, the UL Masters, about what does an occupational therapist do. Again, it's two years, you have to do the HPASH. 
Um, and there's a really good video there and some information from the UK on what do occupational therapists do. But it's a fascinating career area. And again, it's something you can complete in two years. OK, if you've decided that you don't want to get into anything related to psychology, there are other options. OK, this is just a very small sample. Um, Jameson, if you're interested in travelling and you have another language, um, if any of you have tried Jameson Irish Whiskey, they have a really interesting graduate programme. It's about 13 months. It can be extended to three years. Basically, they have opportunities across the globe. They have training. It's all about becoming a brand ambassador for Jameson. Um, so have a look at that. The applications for that don't close until the 23rd of February. Sabis, as I said earlier, they recruit graduates from lots of different um, disciplines to teach in Dubai and the Middle East. Maybe you'd like to go teach English for a year after you've graduated. So the Irish government have a scheme, the English language assistance scheme as well. So you can go and teach or become a classroom assistant in Austria, Italy, Belgium, Spain, France, Germany. So that's a really interesting one if you'd like to travel for a while. And then we have all the information on teaching as well. So if you are thinking of possibly getting into educational psychology, you might decide to do a PME in teaching. So you've got your teaching qualification on top of your psychology qualification as well. Um, OK, we've only got about five, ten minutes left, um, but just some brief information. I suppose funding postgrad study is the big is a big question for a lot of students, isn't it? I saw a question there earlier about fees. Elaine, I think you answered that. Um, if you're currently on a student grant and you're doing an undergraduate course, you may be eligible for a grant for your first postgraduate course as well. So have a look at the SUSE website. If you'd like to do something in a completely different area after you've finished springboard courses, they're funded by the Irish government. They run courses in lots of areas like IT, areas that have skills shortages. There's one specific area called the HCI. It's the Human Capital Initiative. They have conversion programmes for graduates from any disciplines to kind of flick you over into another area. So Springboard is really interested. interesting if you're looking at kind of moving into another area. Prospects is really good if you're thinking about studying abroad. OK, very briefly, conversion courses. These are postgraduate courses that allow you to convert to a new discipline. So, for example, if you're studying the BA Arts degree now and you don't have enough credits for recognition by the PSI, you look at looking at doing conversion course in psychology. But you can do conversion courses in law, psychology, as I said earlier, speech and language therapy, medicine, accounting, software development. So once you have a level eight degree, that can open up so many different doors for you. OK, so here's a list of courses that may be of interest in UL. Some of you are probably doing them already. Um, so you've got your MAs in psychology, psychological science, then the other courses in the education and health sciences. Um, you've got sports, exercise and performance psychology. You've got the MA in music therapy in the Irish World Academy. In the KBS, you've got the masters in work and organisational psychology. And in AHSS, you've got psychology, technical communication, and you've got the law masters programmes as well. So lots of interesting courses in UL as well as well as other universities. OK, if any of you thinking about emigrating or moving to a different country, Prospects, again, has information on 50 countries, what it's like to work there, where the jobs are, visa requirements, things like that. So prospects.ac.uk. If you have, sorry guys, if you have a second language, there's a massive demand for Irish graduates who have second languages, okay? So EU jobs, um, you can see the, the links there. We will be running a seminar on EU careers, I think in semester two, so keep an eye on that. So if you have a second language and you'd like to work in one of the EU institutions, there are some fantastic opportunities over there. If you're still not sure about your career plans, um, there are a couple of things that you might find interesting. The NHS in the UK, they have a really good careers assessment quiz. It's called the Health Careers Find Your Career Assessment. I think they have careers over there in the UK that we've never even heard of over here. So it literally will take you, you know, 
20 minutes and it will come up with a list of careers that suit your answers. It will come up with salary scales, how to get into these areas. It will give descriptions of what it's like to work in these areas. So it's a fantastic website if you want to kind of, you know, if you are thinking about a career in the health sector, but you're not quite sure yet, that's a fantastic website to look at. Okay, finally, some useful websites. So you've got the PSI website. Don't forget to join the, as a student member. Um, I found an article on tips for aspiring clinical psychologists. The BPS have a good section on careers and qualifications. They also have the alternative handbook. I haven't mentioned counselling and psychotherapy today, and I know that's a popular option for a lot of people. If you want to have a look at the website, though, they'll give a list of accredited training pro programmes for counselling and psychotherapy. The Google app group is good too. Thanks, Michaela. Um, and then finally, team focus. If, if you find at any stage that you have to do psychometric tests as part of a kind of an entrance assessment um, for any jobs or postgrads, we have a range of free assessments. If you just click on this link here, even if you go into Google and put team focus, University of Limerick. Um, and you can do as many psychometric tests as you want. We also have from some free online career assessments there as well, if you'd like to do a bit more research into what kind of a career would suit you. Okay, so to summarise, what would I say to you? John, the PSI, said that already. Be very clear about the skills you have, okay, and be able to articulate them. Familiarise yourself with recruitment and selection processes. Again, if it's an assistant psychologist position that you're interested in, make sure you know you have a really good understanding of what the you know the basic entry requirements are, and then what are the desirable requirements as well, and use that as a plan to help you move forward and get experience in these areas. Again, know how to you know, articulate your skills, especially if you're thinking about applying for a postgrad and you have to write a personal statement. So again, we can, we can review that with you as well. Be interview ready. If you're applying for jobs in the HSE, the public sector, as I said earlier, you, know, you probably will be doing a competency-based interview. So we can help you prepare for competency-based interviews and we can run through a mock interview with you as well. Make sure your CV and LinkedIn profile are up to date. Make sure to use LinkedIn to find out where previous graduates are working. If you know, again, if you're looking for an assistant psychologist position, this will help you to find out where previous graduates are working. It might give you some ideas of companies to apply to. Ask for help. I think that's a really important thing. Whatever you're studying, that's what we're here for as well. So use the career service. We can help you navigate your way. Use your network as well. Talk to your classmates, talk to your course directors, talk to anybody you know that can help you. Finally, if you want to make an appointment to see myself or my colleagues, you can just contact us through careersconnect.ul.ie and you can make an appointment to see us. We're open all the time. I think we'll be open right up until, you know, 20th of December. We'll be back on the 4th of January. So we're open all the time, Monday to Friday. Feel free to make an appointment to come and see us. And I think that is it. And I'm going to stop recording.